do what it do what it do we are here with the last episode of 2021 Yay. this is your number one crew over the ropes wrestling podcast this is your boy jd aka mr mike drop this is your boy jay aka mr rant and this is trey aka trey Ray. and we are back with another banger oh um, excuse me i would just like to point out that with this being the last episode of 2021, I was very professional in the intro, and I don't give no credit for that. You know, I, I, I'm, so, I'm so used to, I'm so, I'm so used to you killing the daggone intro that I didn't even notice it. I know, right? Like, I really did. I'm trying to be professional here. Why now? It's the end of the year. Started new. Oh, his New Year resolution. So you know that's uh, that's gonna last. It always lasts the first month. Uh, Oh no, trust me, I'm gonna be worse throughout 2022. Oh, <laughs> Start on this bitch cackling. <laughs> but anyway, man, um it's been one hell of a year, fellas. Yeah. Um we got a little different episode today. We're gonna kinda change it up. Yeah. And instead of, you know, talking about kind of the norm, you know what I mean? We're, I think we're gonna cover we're gonna cover the year. Yeah, the best and the worst of twenty twenty one. I think there's more worse than the <laughs> Well, it, it's more worse with one company than that the next true. one, you know. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, what let's get it started. Wanna, uh, y'all I'm, I'm going to kick it off. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to kick it off because, to me, when it comes down to WWE, when you start off with the worst, you got to kind of start off towards, like, WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And because, like, WrestleMania is, like, the end of the season, and then after WrestleMania, it starts like a whole new season, you know what I mean? Okay. So, I mean, for me, and you could say, you could, technically, you could start off at the Elimination Chamber. Right. So, are we, are we talking about Thunderdome era, era or are we talking about fan base? Well, if you're talking about 2021, I mean, technically, you got to talk about Thunderdome, because okay. that was half of the year. Yeah. And then we got fans back at, what, WrestleMania? I mean, SummerSlam it was? Yeah. So, I mean, if you talk about half of the year, uh, Thunderdome era, for me, uh, what was it? Elimination Chamber was, <laughs> was, was one of the worst. Yeah. I mean, we had I, a lot of... I, I, I... I'm just gonna put it out there, uh, you know. Goldberg, one of my favorites, yeah. but it, it, he goes down in every worst possibility <laughs> in 2021. Like, cause I, all 2021 was just L's. Yeah, it was straight L's. Yeah, I mean, so all right, so let's go. 2021, uh, best and worst match. 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 Let's see, this no, okay, all right. I was gonna say we can't just say best. No, no, no. Okay, I mean, I mean, I got so, several. So, I guess we could say going up to a top five best and worst match okay. of twenty twenty one. Um, I mean, well, you gotta say, what was it? Kofi Mania would probably be the best. You know? Was Kofi in twenty twenty one? No, 2020? that was twenty. That was twenty twenty. Yeah, that was twenty twenty. Now I, I would say that more of a storyline than yeah, the match. That was a the match would be what you were talking about earlier offline was uh, off camera. The greatest wrestling match ever. No, Kofi versus Brock. Oh, Kofi versus Brock. That was twenty twenty one, right? That was twenty twenty. That was twenty twenty. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was last year. Well, th this year, that's why I was pointing it out because I was like, when I thought about it, this twenty twenty one, we dealt with Roman all, all year. Andrew. Because Roman Roman beat Brock at WrestleMania. And Drew. Yeah, and Drew. Drew took over in 2021. Yeah. He, yeah. he started it off pretty much. Yeah. So, for me, um, mm, best match, I would say, for 2021. And what company are you talking about? And this is going to be for WWE. Okay. Best match of 2021 would have to be... All right, so for me, best match of 2021 will have to be Edge versus Roman. Edge versus Roman? Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because we got a different part of Edge. You know, we got the brood Edge. We got the sadistic side of the Edge. That was, that actually probably was one of the best matches when they were, I think was it Hell in a Cell or well, yeah because he Hell? brought back because he brought back Brood Edge against Seth yeah and oh, he gave the blood bath yeah that is right so you mean Seth no 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 or you mean Randy Orton 
No, no, no. When he fought, when he fought Roman. Okay. Yeah, when he fought. Roman. Don't be wrong. I, I think it was a good match. I don't, yeah. I, it's hard to say for me if it was the best match. Um. Oh man, what, what? he never fought him one on one. That's right. It was yeah. a triple threat. Match. It was a triple threat match. It's a triple threat match. You know, I gotta think about that because it was hard because there was one match that we did watch. It was after, was it after SummerSlam? Was it a girls, was it a women's match? It was a women's match. I could have sworn it was because we were texting about it and I was talking about, we were talking Bianca about Bianca versus how, Sasha. Oh, Bianca versus Sasha. That's it. I was, okay. just, I was just looking at Bianca up. versus Sasha. Sasha. Top five, number five would be Sasha versus Bianca. Yes. Yeah. Smack that women's yeah. championship. Yes. yes. That that was one of the best Actually, matches. I'm going to put in Roman versus John Cena. That wasn't another one. Roman versus John Cena. At SummerSlam? Yeah. You you got you got to be honest. Like that really was a good match, even though we didn't like the deciding factor. That was a good match. I guess so. I hated the whole summer Cena thing. Like it, I liked it because I was right and I knew that Cena wasn't going to win. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> but still, like he he'd been gone for over a year just to come back and get a title match and then he loses. But if I'm not mistaken, what kicked off? No. Mm -mm. And then there was, and then we also had Edge versus Seth. Seth that, that was, was, that was, that was a good yeah. match. Yeah, that Seth. definitely yeah. goes down as one of the best. Uh, ones. Becky versus Charlotte. Eh. What that Survivor Series? Mm -hmm. nah, 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 not nah. for me. I'm good on that. WWE ranks at third. That's all right. The WWE's on. When did they rank number one? Uh, Roman versus Cesaro was number two at Backlash. Roman versus oh. Cesaro. Mm -hmm. That was actually a good match. It was. And well, I, and WrestleMania I, backlash. Yeah, yeah, and I was kind of annoyed because I, that's when I was rooting for Cesaro, and then it's like they killed him off after that. Like, he hasn't done shit since that match. And you know what? Number one they had was Roman versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. That was the match. You said Roman and Edge. You forgot I, Daniel I Bryan. forgot Daniel Bryan because I fixed it. I was like, oh, that was a, a triple threat match. But that was probably I one do of the agree best with matches. them that that probably was the best match of the year. Yeah. Worst match? Um, Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. <laughs> <laughs> Worst match. I would say Bianca versus uh, Becky. Becky at, at yeah. SummerSlam. Well, Bianca versus Becky has to go. Down. Yes, that's one. one that's match. one. It was less than thirty seconds. It was. It's it was. It was less than thirty <laughs> seconds. But you also got to think like. No, the Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg at uh, what 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 pay per view was that? Was the Miz losing the championship in twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one? Twenty twenty one. Yeah, that for me that's one of the worst matches too. When mm. Bobby Lashley beat the Miz. So I mean technically if you're going to just buy a match then yeah. I mean we're saying worst match. Well sometimes you gotta think about the significance of the match too. Uh, nah, I could I mean don't get me wrong, it started the whole era of the almighty, but still. To me it's stupid to build up this and then have a twenty second match for a title. What about the women's money in the bank that Nikki won? That Nikki had the same one? Yeah. On that good? <laughs> you talking about the match or her title run? The match. <laughs> no, the match wasn't that good. That she either. won. <laughs> I mean, the title run wasn't. And good then either. I'll also the I'll also throw in for worst matches because I don't think we're going to come to a consensus. I'm also say worst match. A lot of these don't come from Survivor Series. Was the women's Survivor Series match oh, God. when all the SmackDown women turned on Sasha um, and Bianca ended up winning? I was happy for her, but still the match was just like yeah. Uh, it, it, that that whole we'll get to that later, but yeah, that that match was pretty awful. Now going into AEW, <laughs> I know what my best match is. What's your best, What's your match? best match? It's a tie, and the crazy thing is they both have Brian Danson in them. Oh gosh, I swear you better not go with these two matches that ended in no contest. I am. Oh my god, with go Kenny. back and go back and watch them. The match with Kenny was great, but the match with Hangman was crazy. Uh, those two are my worst um, match. My best. Match. My worst match might be uh, Inner Circle versus uh, the American Top Team. My best match. <laughs> my best match would actually be that um the tag team match in in the cell in the steel cage. When your boys won? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's probably my best match. Settle death. <laughs> Fear. Yeah. <laughs> You said that's gonna be your your worst match. Worst. Yeah, that's my uh, best. Oh, I thought you said. No, I, no, said no. I could have sworn he said that was his worst. No, I said that's my best match. I mean, you know, for me, it's hard to say because I, I don't know if I can say match or moment. Um, 
I like when CM Punk came back and shit. Yeah, we can do WWE. We can do uh, we can that's, do best moments also. That's moment. Yeah, I, I, sure. I have to say. I moment. think that's that's number one moment of. But, yeah. CM Punk, but CM Punk's match yeah, too. I mean, his very first match coming back with uh, Darby. Darby to me was one of the best yeah. matches that AEW has had on their pay per view. So. Yeah. Or you know whatever. So. You talking about um, the one when it was like in the fact in a warehouse? No, no. His first CM Punk's first match. Oh, 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 I thought you were talking about Sting. My fault. My no, fault. Uh-huh. My, fault. My, fault. Uh-huh. my fault. To me, that was, I mean, you throw that in the yeah. mix for me. That's that's one of the best matches it was. Me through. Um, Hangman versus Kitty was definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just a, that's a moment for me too, though. That's one of the best moments, even yeah. though it's a good match. Yeah. I mean, you know, Hangman. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Jay don't really watch wrestling for the matches. You no, I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I really, I mean, I watch him. We for, are a wrestling podcast. We are supposed to be wrestling enthusiasts. I watch them for the matches, but Period. you, you got to take in some of the moments that they have when it comes down to certain situations. It does, but the moments sometimes is what helps the match it be is. even better. I like those, uh, like those Undertaker matches against Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Yeah, they were great matches, but what also made them better was the stories that went along with the match. Yeah. So that's why I say I could definitely agree with the Kenny and Page match being one of the, if not the best match in AEW this year because everything that led up to it. This is they've been building this story for two years. Yeah. Yeah. And then it all came to fruition at the end. I can tell you what the worst match was for me for AEW. Was that it involved Thunder Rosa? Oh, God, no. Please don't. It should, but no. Okay. The worst match for me was that damn uh, no holds bar match with Cody Rose and uh, what's his name when he went through the fire table. Oh, Malachi? Malachi, yeah. You didn't like that? Hell no. no. That was stupid, man. I wouldn't say that's my worst, but. It's one of the worst. He, he took the full table. Yeah. He t- you can tell from him. He still got the marks on him. Because he'll die for this shit. <laughs> nah, <man. laughs> at um, this point, at, at this point in Cody Rhodes' career, shit like that should, should be, be for people who are trying to establish themselves a little bit more. You know what I mean? And they're willing to take that risk. But somebody at Cody Rhodes' caliber to stoop that low to get a pop to me, and, it, and and to me, he didn't even stick it because it could have been a botch. Himself. It could have been a botch. You probably when he pulled the table, it, whole table. It was a botch. He wasn't supposed to go through that whole table like that. Well, you talking like he did it on purpose? I mean, I'm just saying. Though, <laughs> it, even worse, you botched it. Like you didn't even get botches happen in wrestling. He, he got. He I got, mean, come on, fellas. Cody yeah. took the whole full brunt of that damn table. He got up and was still on fire. Yeah, exactly. He was like, on nah. This is company. Okay, so <laughs> worst match. Of AEW. Worst match of AEW. I already said my inner circle top. Brian Danielson top and uh, Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson and Hangman Adam Page for two freaking matches that ended in a no decision because of a fucking time limit. That's all I got to say. <laughs> See, this is, I feel like that goes to preference. <laughs> that, that, goes pre- to, that definitely yeah. goes to preference. That goes to preference. Because that Adam Page and Daniel Bryan is probably one of the best Wrestle matches ever. Yeah, regular TV I'm trying to think. Yes. Iron Man match. Yes. Nobody won. Yes. Twice in a row. All right. You want to know my word? Yes. Match? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I was going to say yes five times. Chris Jericho <laughs> versus um, the Ayatollah. What's what's his name from GCW? Nick Gage. Yeah. That was the pizza worst. cutter. Yeah. That was yeah. My worst the match. five labors of Jericho. Yeah. Oh, that was my worst. I forgot about that. That's my worst. That's when we were at live. Yes. Yeah, here in Charlotte with the with the with the uh, light tubes and stuff. Oh yeah, oh, my the gosh. lights. It, just to watch that, it was cringy. It was cringy because it was just like I guess TV makes it look more interesting, but to actually see it, I was just well, like one. It's a uh, fluorescent light. Yeah, I mean, whenever you throw it against anything, it just turns to dust. Yeah, and then you so, get hit and you just walk it. And yeah, you don't. Too oh much. no, the, was that twenty twenty one? What? No, that was 2020. Damn, we should have did this in 2020. When um, Kenny and the death match. Oh, yeah, that was last year. Damn. That, <laughs> oh, we got to incorporate 2020. No, we ain't do this. That was the worst match ever. Kenny versus John Moxley. Oh, uh, yeah. And Kenny yeah. came out to cover John Moxley. Yeah, and that death match. Unfortunately, that was last year. I know. That's oh. Okay, well, let's kind of switch it over. All, All right. right, let's. 
let's get into what is what are some of the best moments that you've had so best or experience mo- when it comes down to WWE. Let's we'll start with WWE. Best moment of 2021. Um it will probably did he come back in 2021? Did Roman come back in 2021? No. No, he came back in 2021. Yeah. So, oh shit. Damn. <laughs> 2021 was horrible for him. So best moment. Oh my goodness. I got one. Big E winning the championship. That's pretty good. Big E winning the championship. I mean, yeah, of course. That's always going to be one of the best moments. Yeah. For me, because <laughs> WWE has been so trash this year, yeah. uh, I have to say the best moment has been having fans back in the damn state. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm just I'm joking. Out. I mean, they had a lot of great moments. Um, you already said mine. Big E. Xavier Woods winning uh, King, of King of the Ring to me was one of the best moments. Today. First black King of the Ring since King Booker, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, even though they don't do King of the Ring every year, but it seems like now they're trying to incorporate it every year. Mm-hmm. I still say that King of the Ring needs to come with like some type of future championship, whether it is the mid card or you know what I mean, the WWE or the Universal Championship. There needs to be some type of incentive for becoming King of the Ring, but. Yeah. That's on another note. Um, Mine would uh, probably be Bianca winning, winning, winning the SmackDown hey, Championship. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, I mean that was great. Yeah, that's uh, because honestly, because not to toot my own horn, but I would say Royal Rumble also because I picked her to win that too. <laughs> you know, as as much as I hate to say, I kind of feel like you have to incorporate Royal Rumble kind of in this because of how the year is structured with WWE. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I said, WrestleMania. Kinda yeah, because it's, it's kind of like the. The physical year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The physical year. Because WrestleMania kind of ends the year for them, and then that Monday Night Raw kind of starts a new year for them. Yeah. So, I mean, but Bianca winning was great. Um, Who who won it for the men that year? It was uh, Edge. Edge, yeah. I mean, to me, Edge returning was a lot better than him winning the following year. You know what I mean? Um, I think... I'm not... It, it, we knew it was coming, but I think moment John Cena coming back. I mean, he got a great pop when he came yeah. back. Don't get me wrong. The summer Cena, and, I still didn't care for. And then Becky and Brock coming back at uh, SummerSlam. Yeah, I like the I like Becky returning because those are good the 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 moment. The reason for me is like I, I hated the match, but her coming back was so great because I think that she spent. Half of the year, just tricking the shit out of the fans. Yeah, posting shit up on Twitter at certain. Uh, remember, she did a Royal Rumble and then she didn't show up, and then she did it for WrestleMania. Then she wasn't there. Yep. So she was just tricking the mess out of fans, having fans believe that she's coming back, and then she wasn't coming back. So I mean, I like that moment for that reason. I just hate that they ended it with that horrible match. Like you ruined a good thing. With that match, I actually have um, to go back to the last one. I actually have a match that we didn't talk about, and that is uh, the Fiend versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. Mm. That's another one for worst matches. Oh, mm. I thought you were about to say best match. No. <laughs> it started off as a great match, though. That's the thing that, that that's the it was the way that it, it was just the way they ended it. It's the way they ended it. It did. And then, it and then to go back to moments, I would say. I don't know if this is one of the best ones, but one of my favorite moments was when Bray got set on fire. <laughs> I actually like that. But that wasn't tw- that was twenty twenty. Was it? Yes, that was twenty twenty. It's so hard to Damn. know because that was when he fought Randy Orton because you got an Inferno match on yes. uh, Summer on TV. I mean, Royal no, Rumble. it wasn't on TV. It was at the pay per view. Yeah, was it a pay per view? When, yeah. when Bray got set on fire, it was Thunderdome. So to me, at the time, they Randy all got shot in the face with fire on Raw. Yeah, okay, that was Raw. All right, yeah, yeah. we got to think like Royal Rumble is like towards the beginning of the year, and then WrestleMania is in April. Yeah, so it's like. Right there at the beginning, so it's kind of like it's borderline. Like it's borderline twenty twenty because the build up is in twenty twenty going into twenty twenty one. I have one for y'all. Um, I want y'all to tell me whether y'all will put this more on the best or worst spectrum of uh, moments, and then this can also lead into storylines. Uh, Kenny becoming the belt collector, or or actually collecting all the belts. I hated that. Was that a, was that one of the best or worst moments? Worst moments. So our so we shifted over to AEW, right? Yeah. 
So one of the best moments I actually for like AEW it. was their their intertwining with Impact. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, hands down. The, I mean, AEW in twenty twenty one had two great things, and, and that was kind of twenty twenty two when they had the whole thing going on with Impact. It was stuff. because but of the build up. It did lead into twenty twenty one. Yeah, but I mean, just that relationship that they had with Impact put them. On a whole and New Japan, it yeah. put them on a whole nother level. It did. I kind of wish that it would have lasted a little bit longer than what it did. But remember, I kept telling y'all all last year, I just don't see the benefit for impact. Yeah, like AW benefited off of that. They the really did. Time. Like they got so many. I, I feel they got like so many impact got the and stuff. short end of the stick when it came down to what 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 benefited impact on that was that for their small venue due to COVID. Yeah, that they got big time superstars there, yeah. and that was their benefit. They got a big time superstar, a big time match, and stuff like that. So that was their benefit. It didn't put them any closer to Mount Everest. Um, <laughs> you know, they probably was on a glacier level, but it didn't put them over the top. Like okay. it could have been so much. It could have been so much to shift in that. Mm-hmm. Deal or a, a agreement arrangement, but I mean it was a great moment. I think, and this can you can also say the match was okay. Yeah, but just the moment that came from the match, I think I would have to say was um, Christian getting the Impact Championship. Mm. That to me, because I, I felt Kenny like, losing for the first time. Yeah, um, well, he wasn't clean; he got beat by a chair, but pinned on TV. Yeah, for the first time in forever. Yeah. yeah. Losing one of his belts that he was collecting. Okay. And then, I mean, you know, the big one, I already said it before, but, you know, you got the C- debut of CM Punk. I mean, god damn, that was just so good. I think I watched that shit like four times. Yeah, I've watched it like CM, 20. Yeah, when CM Punk debuted. I mean, but you can also throw the best moments is at the end of the pay-per-view. All out when Adam Cole debuted. I was just about to get to that. Ryan yeah, Dane. Ryan Dane. And and now yeah. currently, like even though we knew it was coming, you got Bobby Fish. Bobby Red Dragon is back. Exactly. Yeah, you got um, Kyle O'Reilly. Like yep. we, we pretty much got AEW's UE. And then one thing I loved is on Dynamite when uh, O'Reilly was looking at Cole and he was like, "Yeah, I know Bobby's got my back, but I don't know about you." Yeah, referencing their I NXT yeah. feud. Yeah. yeah, real wrestling fans caught that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I caught it when um uh, when Bobby Fish debuted because Adam Cole like turned around and gave him a look like you know are you a friendly or are you a foe? Yeah, and then that's kind of when um uh what you call it came out. Uh, O'Reilly. No. Uh, Bucks. Yeah, when the Young Bucks came out, mm-hmm. and that's when Bobby Fish kind of got behind Adam Cole, and he was like, yeah, let's go. And I was like, oh, shit, okay, because I thought he was going to attack Adam Cole at first. Like, yeah. He he made it, it kind of made it seem like the vibe that he was giving off was that he wasn't really there to be on the side, and mm-hmm. then it just quickly. And it's the same turned. thing with Kyle O'Reilly. Like, we all thought, because they both went head to head, and it was kind of like, yeah, all the tension, like, they bringing that, and what we're a lot that we're seeing, um, and this is definitely in moments, is that AEW is putting a lot of reference to a whole bunch of WWE shit. A lot, well, I think and I'm not mad about it. They're going straight at as their number one competitor. Yeah, but it's not what I've seen recently, though. It's not all bad stuff. Like they've been referencing. A lot of good shit in yeah. the WWE. Well, you got to think about it. Okay, this is, for me, this is what they're doing. They're taking the shit in WWE that worked. Yeah. That it seemed like WWE was too stupid to really catch on to or, or realize. Stupid. And wanted to keep going with their original plan instead and, of acting organically. To exactly. Over. And they're not erasing those superstars' history. history. I, yeah. That's the main thing. They're I mean, not the biggest removing thing. their history. Yeah, WWE like, acts like if you're a big time, NFT. if you're a big time company, uh, because because WWE they will mention New Japan, they'll mention they'll, all they'll, they'll mention, no, they they'll never mention, really mention New Japan, New Japan. They'll mention like indie, 
no, they, no. They, when, they when, a, when, when AJ Styles debuted at the Royal Rumble, they said he's a former New Japan champion like Brock Lesnar. They did. Yeah. And they did that for Asuka, too. Yeah. yeah. They did it for Asuka. So, so, so okay, they reference, they, they reference New Japan, and they'll reference um, ROH. Yeah. Yes. And that's about it. They normally don't They don't uh, talk about Impact. No, they don't. No. They would because when Impact. Sting debuted, they acted like once he left WCW, he was just sitting at home yeah. on his ass the whole time until he came back when he yeah. was in Impact for like 12 years. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they didn't mention that. And then them, they only mentioned AEW on TV that one time when Sami Zayn said, oh, you're not going to ask me about AEW? Yeah. yeah. That's the only time they've ever mentioned AEW. Yeah. And I don't even think Sami Zayn was supposed to do that when he did Nah, it. that was off the cuff. Yeah. Pretty much, I'm pretty sure he got fined for that one. He said it was off the cuff. Yeah. Now, I mean, uh, like, I like, like, to give everyone what Jamie was saying, you know, the fact of the matter is that you can't erase these people's history. And then on top of that, like, AEW is knowing that the the fans are understanding that these are all former WWE stars. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not treating the fans like they're stupid. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I understand suspending your disbelief, but if I literally just saw this man or this woman on another program a month, a couple weeks ago, even two months ago, yeah. you really gonna make me try to believe that they weren't doing anything and they just popped up yeah, here? Exactly. <laughs> like, like saying that Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly, like they literally state these guys have recent past history. Like I don't know if this or or this this agreement arrangement it literally worked ran out NXT for three years. Well, yes. you know, it's so funny though because you did there is something that you did say that does like think about when AJ Styles was with uh um the club. Yeah. yeah. They kept mentioning the bullet club. Or the club. The club. The they, club. They, they kept mentioning the being in Japan. Yeah, they yeah. did. So I mean like they they have hinted at certain things. They literally. hinted that they've worked together, that they have history together, yeah. but they will not say literally the say the company. I think what it is it's because that. they don't do it with anybody that is U.S. Is, based or competition. Because yeah. ROH is U.S. based, but but uh, they're but they're competition. But, exactly. Yeah. They don't do it with anybody that they feel is competition. Yeah. That's why they'll mention New Japan because yeah, you'll talk about New Japan. But a lot of and, and it's a like, lot of casual wrestling fans that don't know anything about New Japan. Right. Yes, and I, I, it's I, like they're pulling from those companies. They're not pushing towards those companies. But if you think about certain superstars, you you don't have to worry about them showing up. Like you would never see Randy Orton in New Japan. You know what I mean? You Chris Jericho's see, the only one. Yeah, you would yeah. never see John Cena like go over to New Japan. Like certain wrestlers like that, you would never see them pop up on New Japan. Like they would go to another company that's based out of the US like Impact yeah. or now AEW versus ever going overseas and spending all their time overseas. So I that's why they're not really concerned about New Japan like that. Yeah. But going back to um moments um when it comes when it goes to Kenny being the um the belt collector, I did think it was a pretty cool moment when Don Callis showed up when Kenny first won the um, AEW championship. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, we'll see you on Impact. Da, da, da. I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a great way to introduce it. The only thing I did not like about the Bell Collector, and I was saying to you, I said, it's going to come a time where he's going to have to lose all these belts. So you're just going to see Kenny just start losing and losing, it's the way and, losing it, it, and losing. Well, when and in, in that case, it just it's on your creative team to figure out how you're going to have him. That's losing. true. That's true. Because of course he's not going to go undefeated and keep all the belts. Of course he's going to eventually lose them. Exactly. But it's just about how they do it and all of that. And you see, he lost to Christian, and then once he lost to Christian, Adam, you know, he Adam, kept the a, he kept the Triple H title title though. Yeah, yeah but Triple H really like. Mm. Let's start promoting that with FTR because they took it from the Lucha Bros. But uh, also another moment, and then we can move on. Another moment that I want to add is the uh, MJF CM Punk promo that was twenty minutes uh, to start off Dynamite. As a, as a good moment or bad? As one of the best. Oh, okay. Because you got to think about it. CM Punk is you no. Know, even if you are not a wrestling fan and you're casual or you've never heard. The one thing you do know about CM Punk is the pipe bomb that he dropped on John Cena and Vince McMahon yeah. and the whole wrestling company. If you know nothing else about CM Punk before he went to UFC. So you got somebody that's known for as being one of the best talkers, has one of the most iconic promos ever in the wrestling business mm -hmm. against what I think is 
the best promo in AEW in MJF, who is an up and comer, uh, top heel, maybe the top heel, and then you just had them go head to head for something that AEW never does, which is start their show off with not just a promo, but a 20 minute promo well, going back and forth. To bring it back to what you're saying, I mean, you're totally right on that. But it's, it's, it's not even the fact that it's something that they never do. AEW's promos, if they do one, is short. It's short to the point you get about, what, four to five minutes tops. You know, I, I haven't really seen any promos to really go past that five minute mark. We care yeah, about the wrestling. Well, leading up to because they are all elite. It's only been <laughs> Cody, Jericho, and Moxley. Yeah, but that Cody promo you talking about the one where they did the weigh in and stuff like that. That was like a segment. No, 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 no. I'm talking Usually. about. You can talk about the one when he was talking about. I went from undesirable to being got to being unfucking deniable. Whatever the whatever yeah, he yeah, said. That still wasn't a five minute promo. It was a mean ass promo though. It was a mean promo, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like when you talk about time wise. All their promos have been like three to four minutes. The longest one I can think of has been like maybe five minutes. Mm -hmm. So to have MJF and and uh, CM Punk go at it for 20 minutes back to back, I mean, it, the vibes were there, definitely. And they and they had the crowd in the palm of their hands the yeah. whole time. Yeah. All the WWE references that they made without really making them. Yeah, without saying I'm anybody's not name. Lie, though, turn around. Edge threw that shit in their face hard. Yeah. Edge threw that in their face. I mean, yo, Ed, I, when you talk about, like, how the promo went down that night, right? And how, you know, because I told y'all, since CM Punk has been coming back, he's been taking jab after jab after jab after jab at WWE. You know His promo saying? when he first came back. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And it's, and it, it's kind of like, okay, I love to hear what CM Punk has to say. But you know, somewhere in that promo... He's going to take a jab at WWE. Yeah. Whether it's direct or it's subliminal, he's going to take some type of jab. But for Edge to turn around and kind of throw it in their face when he did the promo with The Miz, talking about how he got wrestlers looking for a cheap pop referencing his name. And I was like, yo, like just that little bit that he did, just straight shitting on everything that CM Punk did. Stay. And then. The uh, one that I was telling you about, because when you were like, oh, when when, it, when MJF was talking about you can't see me and oh, yeah, all this yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. And then I brought up when Cena was going at Rowan, he said, he took a shot at uh, CM Punk. He was like, who knows? I may win the title, jump in the crowd and blow you a kiss and never come back. Yeah. I was like, okay, see, I like that. The moment. Yeah. Exactly. Was CM Punk's John Cena parody in that match. Oh, uh, yeah. When he acted like he wanted to do the five-minute shuffle. Five <laughs> shuffle. He actually did the attitude adjustment. Yeah. 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 I know. Like, that part, I was like... I told you, it's just, like, as we as we go on, we're going to see it more from CM Punk. You're going to see it small. I, 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 I think we're actually going to start seeing it more from WWE. Oh, yeah. They got to fire back now. Yeah. They got no choice but to fire yeah. back. Vince McMahon did the whole, oh, I ain't worried about AEW. They ain't no... Okay. And man. then Roman came out online talking about CM Punk saying that he wasn't even really that good. Yeah, yeah, like all of that, and see, I've noticed that a lot of people are saying that now that CM Punk is back and he's getting all this fanfare, a lot of people coming back. Like even Booker T said something, and he was like, "I don't know why he's talking about that." Because it's, that. it's different when somebody's not employed, but they're talking shit from the sidelines, versus they're employed wrestling with another promotion. And now, I mean, look at the views that CM Punk is getting on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, these four or five minute clips are getting. Millions of views from people, and I think, and it's and it's CM Punk shitting on WWE. Yeah, and you I think another I mean? thing is like, which everybody why weren't you, see anyway. why weren't you popping all that shit when? Thank you. When you was on uh, backstage, exactly. You know, you wasn't employed by WWE. employed by WWE. You wasn't employed, but you were working with employees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know, but I Bronson I can tell you Reed. this one. Hold on, I just gotta say that. we watching Impact right now, and Bronson Reed is on Impact. I'm maybe late to the party, but it's throwing me off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's been on there. Yeah. I was like, yo, that's Bronson Reed. Okay, but you know, we was hoping that he was gonna be one of the bloodline. Yeah, yeah. but that's gonna be for Solo. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. No, I was gonna say another great moment that I had at AEW was um, when we it was just recent 
we had uh, Darby Allen, Sting, and, and CM Punk, Punk, and they all came out with the face paint on. The yeah. old three, school, old three school. different versions of this. Like um, uh, Sting had on yeah. CM Punk. Yeah, uh, like Teach, colors, yeah. And, and he had the not because he had the the fist on his forehead. Yep. And then CM Punk had on Sting's old school. He had the surfer. Head. He had the surfer. Yeah. Stand. I yeah. was like, okay. I was like, all right. Yeah. That was a great. That's iconic. That was a great. That's iconic. Right there. I yeah. like that. But it kind of throws me back because WWE's had now, this is old, but WWE's had these little moments because if you think about it, when um you had who was it, Daniel Bryan as a champion, and then remember Zack Ryder came out. Um, as the was he the United States champion, mm -hmm. and then there was another person that came out. Remember, we had all three of them come out through the fan, um, through the crowd. It was the you, um, the United States champion. It was it was the Intercontinental champion, which was Zack Ryder. Yeah, the United States champion. champion. Who was the United States champion? I can't remember who it was at the time. Because it was like three hundred dollars. Yes, we were because, was, because was, we were confused the first time I brought this up. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know, but I just said like, and then it was Daniel Bryan who had. Just won the world championship. The world championship. Yeah. Like that was one of the great best moments. I mean, Occupy Raw was, was one of the was best it, moments ever. Was it Cody? Nah, it wasn't Cody. Nah. It was somebody that was an underdog that won the because you know Zack Ryder had won it in the ladder match mm -hmm. at WrestleMania, and then somebody had won the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania too. That was the underdog. I can't remember. Was it Rey Mysterio? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't Rey Mysterio. Mysterio. It'll be somebody in the end. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, that was a good moment. Oh, and then before we get off of moments, I will say one of the worst moments in 2021 for me from AEW is anytime Dan Lambert gets on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all see the promo him and Brandy had? Yes. Oh, my God. Bro, I love, I love me some Brandy, but gosh, he be, cringy. She be cringy on yes. the mic sometimes, yo, boy. Yo, my, she wife, cringy was, as my hell. wife was even cringing like... <laughs> And then she ended it well. I guess I'm just a black bitch. I'm like, oh, oh you know, she's a, oh, she's out of practice. Oh, it was like that before. Remember, remember when her and Awesome Kong was doing the Nightmare Collective, oh and she God. came out like like a uh, black Alexa Bliss with the. Yeah. It was just weird. Like Brandy, you my girl, but I like Brandy, but I like her better as a backstage official like in the you know back office she, as a wrestler no she's entourage she's let's entourage. just keep it 100 we like her as entourage no nah, on, on cody's arm nah, i know i know you i know you didn't mind i know you didn't like when he went through the table but i was i was cool with uh brandy coming out and setting the table on fire Bro, and you talk about cringy as cringy was kid. watching brandy Put that daggone stuff on her and then <laughs> light the table like eight times before she finally got it lit and then Cody Rose trying to put Malachi Black through it, but he went through the table instead. Like it was bad. Well, to 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 give Cody some credit, one of my favorite moments was when he jumped off the top of that cage. Oh yeah, and did that moonsault uh, on yeah, the yeah, top of that yeah. tall ass cage. Yeah. And then shout out to AEW for another great moment. Well, another great moment was Jr. coming back last yeah. night. But another great moment free. was when uh, Jr. said. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in in AEW, the cage matches uh, end inside the ring. <laughs> we don't, they don't, they don't leave. They don't walk out. You have to finish the match inside the ring. Like I love that. Uh, Jr. be always be shitting on WWE. Because you talking about seeing Punk throwing shots. Jr. be throwing JR shots be left throwing and right. Shots, yeah. He throwing JR haymakers. Stay throwing shots, man. Yeah. But let's move on to uh, uh, pay per views. Oh mm. God. Let's start with AEW because I feel like we'll go a lot longer. I mean, longer they got less pay per views. So. And we'll go longer. So, the best pay per view mm -hmm. um, to me by far, it's not even close, is All Out. Yeah. Because we got the Lucha Bros winning against the Young Bucks in the Cage match. We got Ruby Soho's debut. Yeah. We got Adam Cole and Brian Danielson's debut. Yeah. Uh, Kenny retained his title against uh, Christian, which we all saw coming. Yeah, we already but, knew. But. That was probably that was a great match. I mean, uh, great. And then uh, your boy Suzuki from New Japan came out to uh, to get in Moxley's face mm -hmm. after Moxley won his match. Yeah. There was a lot going on in All Out, so I would definitely say that All Out is the best AEW pay per view of. This I don't year. know if I can say that there was really a bad AEW pay per view. I mean, we had the what was the one that it was pretty much predictable? Well, it was the one before All Out. And remember, because we ran through it, and we was, it's, we was going uh, through them at double, double or nothing. nothing. 
double or nothing. If it, I it was, say, it was kind of pretty. It was kind. The matches were great. It, it was. It was a little WWE. Yeah, because I remember we said on the podcast that yeah, yeah. y'all kind of went. Like we went through the <laughs> matches, and like when I, when we watched it, remember the matches were good. Yeah, but the Bro, outcome, the outcome of the matches, we pretty much predicted like the whole entire show. Right. I mean, I can't say that they have had physically had a bad pay per view because one. They only do four or five a year. Four a year. Four so, to five. Yeah, yeah four or five a year. So official pay per view. Exactly. Because we get pay per view worthy. Like Fighter Fest and yeah. Winner is Coming and stuff like that yeah. on yeah. TV. Yeah. So. And that, I like how they do that because that's their build up shows to the pay per view. I like how they do it except for recent with the, uh, Brian Danielson. Yeah. So I don't care what anybody say. The match might have been great, but the outcome was stupid. Top match 2021. Yeah. Both companies. So, if they do it again, I'm not putting AEW on. (laughs) Worst. They're going to timeout. Uh, Worst for WWE? Where do we start? All right. Uh, Survivor Series. All right, we got to start in 2019. (laughs) (laughs) 2021, worst for pay per view for WWE is definitely Survivor Series for me. Yes. Survivor Series was not the worst. It was one of the worst. We already knew Survivor Series was going to be bad. We did. We said that on the podcast that none of us look forward to Survivor right. Series, and it turned out to be right. Like we we were all disappointed. That and WrestleMania. Which Actually, night? WrestleMania to me was better, way better than Survivor Series. Yeah, because you got to think about it. it. Was. Since WrestleMania has two nights, are you going to WrestleMania night one, night two, or both? I night one. Because night one is where Bianca and Sasha main event. I mean that that was the best match. That was the best match. That was the only. Worthy I would have to night. say that to me, Money WrestleMania was decent. Yeah. Oh, oh, WrestleMania oh, was decent. Oh, WrestleMania was decent. Oh, oh. The worst for me was freaking Money in the Bank. I thought that was. I thought we said that was the best one. No, nah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what the best one was. I could have. Oh sworn no, 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 no. I could have no, sworn no. we all agreed that Money in the Bank was the best. Money, Money in the Bank was one of the best ones, except for the women's Money in the Bank. Yeah. Where, yeah. That was the um, one when Nikki won. The, yeah. what, what was the other? Was it t- tables, ladders, and chairs? It was either TLC, TLC had got or canceled. Hell in the Cell. TLC got canceled. Hell in the Cell. Hell in the Cell. Hell in the Cell. One of the worst. Was one of the worst. One, one, of, the worst. worst. Yeah. one of the best, and I thought we all agreed on too, was um, Crown Jewel was one of the best. There we go. Crown Jewel. For the yeah. first time ever. Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel I, I the think that they had. Very worthy matches. But yeah. boy, my sword stayed undefeated. Yeah. The one, the one that was like, yeah, you could have kind of ruined it was the Goldberg and Bobby Lashley match. I mean, know? that did ruin it, but you know, I mean, and, and the only thing that saved it was a spear off the stage. Yeah, that was the only thing that saved it. At least it, it turned out to be a decent match. You know, what we were, I was impressed by it. And we, and we already knew it was going to be a spear fest. And, uh, and a, a jackhammer fest, like it, you know, always. But, you know, you got a little bit of good little pieces there and there. Yeah. But I think Crown Jewel was by far their best pay per view. Yeah. Which and I said, because they, they have one a month. Yeah. So, <laughs> for real. Would y'all like to um, throw any NXT takeovers in the hat for best? I was actually going to say. And for NXT, their best pay per view, and they will, uh, you can never change my mind about this, is always going to be War Games. Yes. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You, no matter no, who's in it, no it just denied. seems War Games is, it just takes the cake. War Games will always be the best. It just takes the cake. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all forgetting some, there's, like, when we talk about WWE, I mean, y'all forgetting Extreme Rules. Horrible. Like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. Anything. <laughs> we said that to, in stereo. Uh, but you got to think. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that has a stipulation as far as its pay per view is horrible. And y'all forgetting Night of Champions. Horrible. Did they have Actually, a Night of Champions? Yeah, they did have a Night of Champions. They had a Night of Champions. They did? Yeah, because Night of Champions. Did I miss that? Night of Champions, every belt is on the line. They is did. it? No, is it, it's Clash of Champions. Clash of Champions. Sorry, did we Clash have that of Champions. This year? Yeah, they had we Clash did? of Champions. We did? Nah. They didn't have a Clash of Champions? Uh uh-uh. uh. Yes, the hell they did. We we are this horrible. <laughs> Clash, <hold on. laughs> Clash of Champions is in September. So who 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 did Okay, hold on. Hold on. Or Night of Cha- okay, Clash Okay, I was Champions. about to look it up. Hold Which on. one did we go to? Well, no, we, we went, went to Clash, Clash of Champions. Champions. But that was last year. But that no. was 2019. That was 2019. Yeah. Hold on, man. 
y'all about to beat me because I know there was a clash of champions because um, do you? Uh, what you call it? Defended the championship. Um, it was uh, Charlotte Flair and uh, what's her name? And we were all talking about it. How? Hold on, I'm about to look it up. Um, because I think it was a lot of fillers in that clash of champions. Clash of champions, 2021. Will be bad. This is horrible. That might that might be that might have been one that was just like, Ooh. yeah. Cause there was no uh, while he's looking that up. There was no TLC this year. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. And TLC usually comes right after. Yeah, TLC's in December. It's this month. Yeah. At the beginning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the um? So we haven't had one this year. I mean, remember, this remember because they got to replace with year one. Day one. It, day one. I keep calling it year one. I don't know. Why. Day one. But I, probably because it's at the beginning of the year. <laughs> but but the first year, yeah, they said it was it was too close. Yeah. Well, I could say uh, while he's looking at uh, going back to worst moments, and I guess depending on who this who was involved in it could be best. Um, I'm gonna say worst moment is all the releases by WWE. I was about to say that too. That was definitely one of the worst moments. Yeah. 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 But I, I can't. But then that's why I say, depending on who was released, it could be best. See, because all the people that went to AEW, it was best. Yeah, for certain ones. Actually, everybody. Honestly, everybody that's left, got re- that got released that went to AEW has actually done something. They've got more TV time than oh, they were shit, getting before. There wasn't released. a Clash of Champions. Yeah, that's not far. I know it. I know it. I know it. The last one was in twenty twenty. <sighs> Come on, Jack. God damn, we. You're bad. better than that. We You're bad. better than that. We better. So what did they have instead of Clash of Champions? Because they had a pay per view. No, nah, we had Survivor Series, and Bruh, then we I'm about had. To hold on, wait a second. Look up 2021. Yeah, this we had Survivor thing. Series, and then our research department is horrible. And then we had um. Damn, what was the last one? I know Crown Jewel was in September, right? Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. this is Saturday. It's on. Is it on TV? Peacock, I think. No, it's not on Peacock. It's on. It's. Is it an NBC? USA? Yeah, I thought it was on USA. It's on regular TV. It's a right? regular. T- oh. It's a regular event. Okay. Mm. They're trying to do something different. They're trying to pull the AEW. Well, it says that he has announced a pay per view to take place on New Year's Day in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, because you know they got rid of um, the one that was supposed to be in December. For day one. Yeah, TLC. Yeah, TLC. Alright, JD, talk about something, man. We got it. <laughs> I, yeah, we're, I'm sorry, we're I so know, quiet because we're I know, right? it's, looking just, this it's just thinking, like... Hey, Crown Jewel, Survivor Series, Extreme Rules, Elimination Chamber, uh, Hell in a Cell, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania... SummerSlam, mm-hmm. WrestleMania Backlash. Extreme Rules was the last one. In- it was September. Money in the Bank. That was last oh, pay-per-view? that's why. I forgot about Fastlane. Fastlane is usually right before uh, WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I knew Fastlane. Yeah, Fastlane was in March. So that's so, if yeah, so Fastlane, because you had WrestleMania night one and two. So, so far this year, because they cut out like three pay-per-views this year. Matter of fact, okay, now I'm looking at this because it because we got we had WrestleMania one and two, yeah, and then we had WrestleMania Backlash. Backlash. Yeah, I hated that. Yeah, that was a that was a replacement. Uh, that was a addition pay per view that they did. Yeah, yeah. that was because that was where the Roman Cesaro match happened. Yep. Yeah, so they they replaced so our last pay-per-view. our last one was what Crown Jewel. The last pay per view was Survivor, Survivor Series. Series. Survivor Series. Survivor Series is in November. No, the last. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. 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 Survivor Series. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then it was supposed to be TLC in December, but, it was but they, too close. they cut it yeah. for day one. Yep. So yeah, because for some reason WWE needs a whole month to now. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. a whole yeah, month to do the exact same plot. It's not like your storylines are. I was about to say, yeah, I can see yeah. if they added in something new, 
But yeah, so all right, we I know we got quiet for a second, but we had to do that quick research. <laughs> all right, I don't know why I was I was thinking of Clash of Champions in the back of my mind, yeah. but I, it was that bad that I just remembered from last year. Then I guess you could say. All right, um, I want to run through something real quick. Best and worst storylines of 2021. Um, I have two. Mm -hmm. Um, for and then this is for me. Best storyline for WWE is uh the formation of the bloodline um paul Heyman and roman reigns getting together mm -hmm. i mean it's gonna have to go as down as the best because the bloodline carried smackdown for all of 2021 and then for AEW, for me i actually like uh the kenny belt collector storyline okay i actually like that so that's for me and then, so we'll just do best for right now. So yeah, y'all go. One of y'all. Best, um, best storyline. Best storyline for each company. Just pick one. Best storyline for me. I mean, it, it's so hard because now that you said the bloodline. I want to pick some somebody else other than the bloodline. You know what you I have, have to, to say? If you believe in the bloodline, it's the bloodline. I mean, I do believe it's the bloodline, but I'm gonna pick something else just because I don't want to say the same thing. But um, I think I have to say Drew McIntyre. Even his, though his run as champion, his even though in the Thunderdome even, era, even though in twenty twenty one we kind of got the fall of Drew McIntyre, we still got Drew McIntyre running into twenty twenty one and before he dropped the belt. What in the summertime to Bobby Lashley? Okay. So I mean, I say Drew McIntyre was one of my best storylines. I like how they built up Drew. If we would have did this last year, um, it would have been um, Kofi Mania. You know what I mean? But since we're on to a whole new year, I'm gonna say that I like I like what they did with Drew. I like how they turned him from heel, even though they did nerf him once he became a face. It, it bad. It's because he got corny, which a lot of they turned him corny. That's their fault. They yeah, but corny. they always turn their faces corny. Yeah, um, they should never turn Drew into a face. I got I got something for you. And then I think my and then I think my favorite for A W. I would have to say would have been the whole. It got to be the CM Punk coming back and the fact that like he wants to face the up and coming because his his stuff leading up to the match with Darby was fantastic for me. One of the best. And it got nothing to do with anything Chris Jericho did, I can tell you that much. Just I, don't believe, I don't believe that. Uh, I know there's a Chris Jericho post around here somewhere. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Surprisingly, it's not. There is not. No, um, it is. He just hides it from us. Um, Best storyline. So I have two. For each company or just for for WWE, I have two. Okay, I have uh, Bianca and Sasha Banks, mm -hmm. their storyline, um, their back and forth. Yeah, but that was technically twenty twenty. Mm, it was twenty twenty one. No, because they fought because it. it started in it started after the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. You're right. Okay, I do that. I do that. Because she was like, I keep forgetting that the Royal Rumble was remember, at Oscar, the end of December. It's in, it's in at the end of January. Oh shit! The end of January. Yeah, you're right. Damn it. So remember, because Oscar was the Raw champ. Yeah. And I Sasha was SmackDown. Then I what, what was it? So, uh, Bianca was on SmackDown. Then Sasha came out. and Was like, enough of this, mm -hmm. Bianca. Everybody know who you're gonna pick. Yep. So just pick me. You know what? Because the rest of that, I keep forgetting about January, February. Yeah. So, but go ahead. And then, believe it or not, Finn Balor's storyline uh, in NXT. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I threw some NXT in there because, I like, this. I, like the Prince, his even though it started in 2020, but leading to the the beginning of 2021, before his merger back into WWE, it was just like he was, was strong. I mean, not main <laughs> roster. You know what the fuck I'm saying? NXT is separate. I'm sorry. It is separate. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not recently. You know. With, with all these old faces coming back, like Riddle, AJ Styles, and stuff. I, mean, I don't know what they're trying to do, but anyway, like just the fact that he's had strong storylines without winning the championship, mm -hmm. that's what made it genuine, I guess to say. Um, and of course, you know I'm going with my favorite tag team at AEW, man. Just just their length the of Lucha Bros. Yeah, yeah their length, their storyline of pursuing that championship after losing it, and they haven't had that championship in two years. Yeah, and so their storyline facing all these top tag teams, and you know 
one getting hurt, the other one still fighting uh, as a as a tag team, but an individual against tag teams, which was um, Ray Phoenix. You know, when Penta got hurt, he was fighting to uh, to get that qualifying um, match. And then the same thing when uh, Ray got hurt, Penta was doing the same thing. So, you know, throw some tag team up in there. You know, I got to throw another one out there, too, for AEW. Because for me, I, I don't know why, I really love when Christian took the Impact Championship. Yeah. I, I think that was one of my favorites too because remember we talked about it for a long time and I said that to for them to give it to like an OG, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. somebody like Christian was there for grinding out an impact for, for a while now, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I, I like I that. I feel like that still like, ties in. I feel like that still ties into mine because it's still an overall part of the overall story, which is the Kenny Belt Collector. Yeah. I Kenny still has two is, belts. Yeah. I do kind of appreciate, at the beginning, the Inner Circle versus Pinnacle storyline. I don't like the last match that they had. Oh, yeah. I the Inner do. Circle versus Pinnacle was legit. The way, yeah. because the way that MJF snaked his way into Inner Circle, yeah. Sammy came out and said, it's either him or me. Yeah. And then when they fought, and then they were able to kick MJF out, but then him teaming up, he was already with Warlow, but then adding Spears and FTR to it with Tully Blanchard and yeah. pretty and Pinnacle pretty much becoming the new four horsemen, getting the stamp of approval from Arn Anderson. Like I did like that part with Arn Anderson that, that he added in. Uh, I can tell you one thing that I hated whenever we talk about um AEW. No, WWE. Okay. And I, I think for me it was anything involving Charlotte Flair. Oh yeah, all of twenty twenty one. I just can't stand the fact that she goes, she leaves, she comes back. Instant title match. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody else, and the same thing with Becky too. Like I'm over people coming back, and that's the one thing I respect AEW for. You know what I'm saying? At least Brian Danielson had several matches before he even got thrown into the. You know the, the title picture. The title picture. CM Punk's been back. It hasn't even had a sniff of the title picture. Same thing yet. with uh, when Ruby debuted. She fought yeah, Brett Baker. Exactly. Lost. Yeah. Oh, worst storylines. KO versus it, oh, oh, versus oh my god. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, so I'm so sick. Of it was that. like five matches. It was like yeah, five matches. Worse. Yeah, I was tired. And of that. then Eva Marie handcuffs. Yeah, I told you. If I see another damn handcuffs, Eva Marie and Dudra. Oh, Eva Marie. Yes. That's one of the worst segments ever was Eva Marie and Dewdrop. Worst moment, too? We forgot about when Roman ran KO over with the damn golf cart. <laughs> come on. I was, it's starting to... Oh, when AEW man. did it and uh, the Elite ran over Sammy Guevara, that was funny. Yeah. The golf cart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, another um, storyline that I will continue to hate is uh, 24-7. Championships. Oh my god. I, you know what? It's so bad. I don't even throw it in the mix. I don't even acknowledge the 24 7 right. championship anymore. But let's go ahead and finish this out with um, what do you want to see or what do you expect to see in 2022 from both companies? For WWE? It's all right. so which one can you go? Which one do you have the least to talk about? Start with, that WWE. One. Start with that one first. I'll start with WWE. Okay. I expect to see the same bullshit that we see now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I expect to see, um, something that I expect to see is them pulling old heads back in. And the reason why I Going say back to the well, yeah, because as you see uh, on Twitter, they signed KO. X Pop made a challenge, said he's getting uh, he's getting ring ready. Um, they asked. The the they asked Stone. They asked Stone Cold to be more a part of WrestleMania than just the host. Now, I would love to see Stone Cold come back in the GM capacity as an enforcer. Yes. Yeah. That would be fantastic for wrestling, especially for WWE oh. if they could pull that off. Oh. One more thing: when we go back to worst pay per views in WWE, Survivor Series also gets. Uh, worst pay per view for all that promo for The Rock and he never showed up. Oh, uh, yeah. Continue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, also, too, 
I can tell you before you keep going, I can tell you what I expect to see in WWE. I can expect to see Brock Lesnar win his damn championship and only show up to maybe about four or five pay per views out of the year. Brock Lesnar's not winning. Okay. We're not going to talk about that right now. But um, <laughs> also. So pretty much, you don't expect anything to change. No. What okay. I do expect um, in 2022 mm -hmm. is the demise of Vince McMahon. Mm. Hopefully. Mm. Hopefully. Where there will be. Don't say it, man. Don't say it because then it won't happen. I didn't say it for a reason because I want it to come true. So, like, I'm ready for somebody else to take over, take the company over, and lead it into the future. And since he decided to drop the mic on that one, I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and I'm going to give you a little bit of, because if you're looking, you'll see that there are reports that Vince McMahon has WWE for sale. Yes. And he's looking at offers. And one of the offer is from a major sports network. It is we don't, a know, who. We it don't is, know who. It's a major sports network. Well, I don't I'm not gonna say offer, but interest. But one of the leading buyers has a mutual yes. talent superstar as far as one of the Pretty much in his back pocket. Is it Hugh King Sr.? No. no. Oh. I was talking to Trey Is earlier. Hobbs? I think that <laughs> I think that oh, ESPN I think that ESPN is buying a portion of WWE. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he kind of threw me off with that one. Yeah. If you think about it. It's not really too far to throw off. A major sports network, somebody that has great connections with all of these networks, so they can keep the relationship with USA, they can keep the relationship with Fox, you know what I'm saying? And then you got to think about the funding, because this is going to be a billion dollar transaction, I mean, over, well over a billion dollar transaction, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Will there be another owner? Hence the, oh, I can't do the eyebrow, but you know, hence the eyebrow, I think that you're going to have multiple owners. You're, it's going to be a main one, then you're going to have a principal owner. Yep. Yeah. I think ESPN is going to be the principal owner. And then I think that we're going to have uh, somebody as the day-to-day. -day. All right. Well, for me, uh, <laughs> what, I expect, <laughs> what I expect from WWE in 2022, honestly, I actually do expect um, or anticipate a sale. Uh, we've been talking about it. Um, and I think it's becoming more and more ev evident mm -hmm. with the people, whether the, whether the talent is asking for their release or not, the fact that they keep releasing people, I know they just signed KO, Bravo, you finally made a good decision, yep. but I still don't see it as like, they're really investing too much. Like, yeah, they have NXT 2.0. I do expect NXT 2.0 to progress. It actually has been getting better. I know we were very skeptical in the beginning. I do like NXT 2.0 is going getting better. Still hate the colors, but the show. But the show is actually good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like. That. I do expect the majority of those wrestlers to move up. I can expect to see a new crop of what I what I expect from NXT specifically is get people popular, move them up, and then just bring in a whole new crop. I don't see them having any more Garganos. Champas, uh, Coles, people like that that stay for multiple years. I don't, I don't anticipate that happening anymore. I don't see that. I see WWE moving forward, um, and moving people up to try to create more new stars that way. I kind of agree with Jay only because they're bringing in more younger. Exactly. Talent. They're bringing in. You should agree with me then. No, because no, you got to think about younger it. talent stays the, longer. Exactly, the younger they are, the longer that they're going to stay. I feel like if you sign to NXT and you come into NXT for the future, basically you're going to be an NXT superstar unless you have a big enough pop to where they have no choice but to bring you up to the main. Grayson roster. Waller, um, Braun Breaker would definitely be. Main oh yeah, 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 yeah. But you got to think, Braun Breaker. Bro, Ultimately, about everybody. He, Braun Breaker has lineage. Look at all the people that they brought up. Who? Okay, Solo would be. Let's put this there. like this. In the last three they years, they still stay though. Hold on, hold on. Listen, in the last three years, okay. <laughs> look at all Bro, the people guy. that they have brought up from NXT in the last three years. How many of them are actually right now getting either airtime or even still in WWE? Without being released, Bianca Belair, 
Riddle, Ricochet. Don't worry. I'll Austin Theory. Austin Theory. He's getting pushed so down. So far, he's doing good. They brought him. They brought him up, brought him down, brought him back up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so far, he's doing good. I, I'm saying going forward, I think that I think that in 2022, they're going to start something new. Now, okay. for AEW, uh, what I expect to see is uh, definitely uh, Brian Danielson and CM Punk. I expect to see one of those undefeated records is going to end. I don't know if it's going to happen when they finally face each other. Mm -hmm. Who knows when that's going to happen? Knowing AEW, they might try to drag that shit to like the middle of the year. Well, with them having so many, like, <laughs> not that many pay-per-views, I think it's going to be dragged out. We won't see that until going into the summertime of next year. I see AEW pulling a WWE superstar pay-per-view. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Wait, all ex WWE superstars facing each other. That would be that would be funny as shit. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Cody, uh, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, John Moxley if he returns in the selfie. He's not coming back. What he's, he's gonna he's gonna come back throughout his contract. To finish his contract. Yeah. Um, I don't know. The, the, they say the, that the thing that I, after his contract. The thing that I saw said that he was looking at retirement. Yeah, he's looking at retirement, but yeah, he's gonna finish out his contract. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, and this is, I see war. Yeah, but it's not just Monday Night Wars now. Now no. we got, we got. I see a company war. Oh, company war? I, I see the, when this sale is final, we will see some, somewhat of a merger. I uh, see, and see. A merger and, between what? WWE and AEW? It's going to be a one night thing per year. Like an invasion. Yes. And the reason why I can I can actually agree with that is if Vince McMahon is no longer the sole proprietor or and owner of the WWE, then I could definitely see that happening. Uh, yeah, because the reason why it hasn't happened before is because of Vince. Yeah. So if he really does sell, which we do kind of anticipate, then yeah, I could definitely see that. Because we've seen Eric Bischoff in AEW. Then we and just he's just wrong. He was just that wrong. wrong. Yep. But one thing I've known is that all of these companies, all of these people that are trying to go for this sale, one, if you if you smell what I'm cooking, he loves that company too, and he respects that company. Well, he already got the XFL. I'm so. telling you, it's some shit going on with Tony Khan and Nick Khan. I I know they're not related, but I guarantee you, it's something between them that's under the radar that they got something cooking. You think they're trying to buy WWE? I don't think they're trying to buy WWE. I think I'm they're trying say, to come to a mutual agreement. I don't think agreement. they got the money for that. No, they definitely don't got the money for it, but I think they Ooh. got a mutual agreement. Who? Tony Khan? Well, Jacksonville. But it's... It, it Tony Khan got the money. It literally would be up to his father. It, yeah, his... Shad. His dad, Shad. Got, his dad might have the money, but yeah. his dad is the one that funded AEW. Don't Talk get me wrong. About. Funding AEW and buying a ten billion dollar over ten billion dollar company is too completely. That go that comes down to the trust that he has in his son to make the right decisions for that for, that, you, for that type of investment. You got to think about the investment that it is. To me, the only person that can really push that would be a big major network. Buying them, I don't think it's going to be just one person. I think that it's going to be like a major network, and I hint, hint. I, I feel like from what I saw, it could have, it's going to be the a worldwide leader. It, it would either be that. Could or you imagine Disney. what ESPN could do with WWE or Disney? Well, Disney owns ESPN, so ESPN exactly. is just yeah. exactly. So it's mm -hmm. going to be. A, I just the only thing I hope about it is that I hope they kind of keep, keep it, keep it keep separate it. from yeah. yeah Disney because Disney's going to. PG the hell out of it. It's already been PG'd enough. So I mean, because if you if ESPN who has an affiliation with UFC, like you in boxing and all that kind of exactly. stuff, you, you think about it. They purchase WWE. Like we might see some revamps. I'm not saying going straight back to an era. Or, come back. You're gonna see a lot of. You're gonna see. Oh, you're gonna Ronda's see coming change. back soon. Yeah. You know, now she had the baby, so she's coming back. It's only a matter of time. Another thing, um, one last thing before we finish out is uh, I do expect to see more belts. <laughs> Definitely more belts from us, but actually, no, damn. I, it lost my mind. It left my mind. But I will do, I do want to say shout out to AEW because 2022, 
January, they will be debuting Dynamite on TBS. Yes, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Rampage apparently will still stay on TNT. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Yep. So where where do you guys see us in 2022? Man, I I just want to keep pushing, keep pushing out these podcasts. Um, you know, definitely 2022. I'm gonna work a little bit better on getting our YouTube and stuff like that straightened out and promoting that. But I mean, I just want to keep doing this, you know, with you guys. Yeah, that's that's what I see us. Maybe maybe possibly hitting up some more shows, you know, outside of Charlotte. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's close enough, you know, driving distance, I'm down for it. Me too. Take OTR, a stroll down to Atlanta. OTR, uh, OTR road trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OTR yeah. road show. Yeah. So we can, turn that, we can turn that into something. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that after this. Definitely be looking for us having, you know, some some guests, and I'm not talking about famous guests as of yet. I'm not going to say that it's not going to happen, but just having some guests here, a um, couple of collabs. Here yeah, here. yeah. Like we definitely looking for it. You know, 2021 has been busy for us. You know, yeah. and just not only with this, but with life. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we definitely appreciate the support. Keep pushing that support. Like, it's only going to make us do better. It's only going to make us do better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. You know, man? I, I, I appreciate 2021, man. We, 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 we done had some good shit pop off. <laughs> so I want to say, here you go, back to the goofy <laughs> shit. Couldn't even I, last the whole day going to show. Hurry up, man. We got to end this. All right, damn. All right. I do want to say, uh, appreciate everybody that's been rocking with us ever since we first debuted. We are we had almost fifty episodes now, which is a big a big thing. Honestly, when we first started this, I don't know how long we thought it would go. I don't know how long I thought it would go. I thought we would just keep going until we decided we didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> but but we've been getting a lot of feedback from people. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to hit more shows, like Jay said. Definitely want to start doing more. Um, I want to start doing some uh, like street talk type more. Stuff. Street talk, but more like behind the scenes vlog type stuff for y'all with seeing like pre-production type banter that we have and yeah. just different stuff like that. Definitely want to get an intro for y'all for our YouTube channel. Yeah. Definitely want to do one of those. New merch. New merch. And actually get to sell the merch because a lot of y'all been asking me about uh, t-shirts. We, we got this coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. A lot of y'all been asking me about t-shirts and whatnot. So the investment, that the investment is coming. Uh. You know what I'm saying? New belts, like this is new everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just want to say shout out to y'all. Shout out to my boys over here. Facts. Um, for doing this. Grinding. So yeah, man. Grinding. 2021 was cool. 2022 is gonna be even better. So that's it. Yep. Hey, and once again, you have been tuning in to Older Rose Wrestling Podcast. This is your boy JD, aka Mr. Mike Drop. It's your boy J, aka Mr. Rant. And yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is trade. Hey, cut the mic. I know what.